I like throwing a curveball at the beginning. And uh, as I said, I am a fan of all three of you. For people that have actually never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why? Wow. Um, I mean, I think we all should be watching The Wire for every reason. Uh, it has nothing to do with me, but just watch The Wire and you'll be happy. Right? Yeah, we'll put The Wire up there, but uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and they can watch The Wire for me too, and I'll just pretend I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I asked Julia Roberts the same question and she said Pulp Fiction. <laughs> that's amazing you know um uh michael is that your answer is you're just gonna stick with the wire sure yeah that's good oh. okay. yeah okay i accept um so one of the things when you guys were making season three you couldn't have known how real the world would like the the the, the way it crosses over almost with the real world can you sort of talk about that aspect that it's a it's a little too close for home yeah i mean i think it's unequivocally heartbreaking i think it's it's uh, it's something that we certainly didn't intend. We wrote the idea for the show about three years ago. Um, I like to put a small homage to all of Tom Clancy's books or movies in the series. And this series or this season, we had decided to make it Hunt for Red October. So that's how we settled on Russia. Instead of a nuclear submarine, we thought, what it, it would it be like to have the main uh, threat be intel from a man? So you're looking for one man, not a, a submarine. And so we had all these fun things to play with, and we thought we were making a larger-than-life season of television that was so far beyond the imagination uh, that you'd have a really good time through this thrill ride. And then to see in real life, not only is it um, uh, uh, not beyond the imagination, but it's it's horrific tenfold. You know, I think what's going on in real life is worse than anything we could have put in the show, and and that that we take that all very seriously. For all three of you, I love learning about like the behind the scenes of the making of a show. Uh, and I'm so curious, which for each of you, um, which shot of the seasons you've been involved with uh, for Jack Ryan uh, ended up being the hardest and why? I'll go first. Being thrown out of a Blackhawk uh, by a Navy SEAL was definitely the hardest and most impressed I've ever been with myself ever, um, though I should probably be scared of my stupidity. Basically, what happened that morning was... Um, two stunt guys had gone through each five or six takes of that. And then as we were flying out to the next scene in that Blackhawk, one of the Navy SEALs said, it would have been way cooler if you did it. And I said, well, how would that look? And he said, it would look like me unbuckling your seatbelt right now and throwing you out of this helicopter. And he did. And it's to, to me, that was the hardest, scariest. And you can see on my face, I was definitely very scared. <laughs> that was the hardest thing I've done in the show. I have a hand to hand combat uh, with a knife. Um, in Moscow uh, this season. That was the hardest for me. Uh, it was the most fun. Uh, and we did all kinds of different takes. We, we changed choreography, all kinds of stuff. And then to actually throw him down um, flights of stairs uh, and actually, uh, actually see it happen uh, was thrilling. Um, so uh, that was the hardest, but uh, also one of the most satisfying. <laughs> And for me, it would have to be, it's nothing to do with action. It was being on the Danube River under a bridge with this guy <laughs> who rewrote the entire scene uh, an hour before we were filming. And it's a walk and talk and in a wind tunnel on the Danube River. And it was guys with a, a screen above, of one foot above my head, like this walking one foot in front of me and trying to just trying to get through this scene and him like, no, you got it. You got it. It's fine. It's, come on. We got, we got this guys over and over and over again. And Take I'm, the third part first and the second part third. <laughs> and then Just completely rearranged the entire scene. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, I can do that. And I just wanted to die. It was and, Mike, and Mike prepares. Mike's, you should see his yeah. scripts, the preparation <laughs> and all of the notes and the history behind it. And then he comes to set just prepared and he has time to do so because he has three breakfasts to go over all <laughs> and then i guess he got to set and they said no we're not going to do it like that you know? but uh so i know that probably was difficult it happened it happened quite often with this guy but i that that being said uh he works his at john works his ass off and wants everything to be perfect and so you know 
as pissed as you are when you get it, you know it's going to be better. So you're like, all right, I'll do it. But it messes with my flow a little bit. I actually wanted to ask you that, John. Obviously, you're a very talented writer, director, um, and it seems like you're tweaking dialogue, you know, but did you, at any point, did you think about directing episodes or is it almost, that's just too much? No, I never thought about directing the episodes. And again, we have incredible writers. It's really about, um, you know, as heady as it sounds, the show or whatever you're working on at some point always takes a life of its own and sort of will tell you what it wants to be and what it can and can't be. And so things that you wrote, you know, five months ago, as little changes have been happening throughout the show, you realize that you have to implement things that you you did in other scenes. And so the show just feels like it, it can make small changes. That's the only thing I would ever uh, help with. We had an incredible producing team and great writers. So it was never just me doing it. It was more about um, I felt, you know, because uh, I, I take the show really seriously, I just wanted to make sure that it was the best that it could be. I never changed Wendell's lines, though, just his. I wonder what that says. <laughs> we are shooting eight episodes at a time and cross boarding the whole thing. So John's right. Like one thing changes here and you don't realize it, but it's going to affect something that you have to shoot two weeks later in a completely different episode. You just feel bad about everything you said about me. That's I do. All. I do. <laughs> but a little a little, that's a little, oh, hard. a little hard. What do you actually think would surprise fans of Jack Ryan to learn about the actual making of the show behind the scenes? I think that it's so much fun. I mean, that I, I, I'm not kidding when I say I, I think the only other time I laughed this hard on set was on The Office. I think that this show, as intense as it looks, we have such a good time together because we genuinely love each other and have developed real friendships, not just, uh, you know, work acquaintances. And so that, I think that to me, that's the most surprising thing that when you see the show, people say like, how did you get through it? And the truth is we had a blast doing it together. I also love the travel and uh, they, they always make fun of me because I will always find oh. something, a unique experience <clears throat> in different countries, uh, you know, whether it's a seaside midnight uh, seafood, chef who prepares uh, this wonderful meal for me in Essaouira, uh, Morocco, or the Budapest Jazz Club, where I would go and hang out with this late night uh, jazz band and sit in a couple of times. Meanwhile, I had dominoes and Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what uh, um, I, I really take advantage of the different places we go to to find these unique little places to go and unique things to do. And we've had we've had some great we have some great times discovering those. Yeah, I'm just looking at Wendell in amazement because John nicknamed, nicknamed him Wizard because he would just he's not kidding. He would disappear. We would be out. He would disappear. And then the next day he would show up at work. and we're like, what'd you get into last night? What they be like, well, it's crazy because I was, you know, I left you guys. And then I went walking down this alley. And there was this door and I said, oh, I should probably go in that door. And I went in the door and then there was this wizard and the wizard took me on a boat. So there I was in the middle of the ocean and I'm eating this crazy food that I've never had. In my life. <laughs> He's like, well, what would you guys do? We're like, uh, watch TV. <laughs> it's like he would just. Yeah. And it was it was often it wasn't just once or twice. It's he's the wizard, man. On that note, I'm going to have to stop. I'm just going to say, um, I really, no, I, I really want to thank you for your work and um, for making an entertaining show. And I wish you guys nothing but the best. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for always being supportive.